Okay, um, we're now going to have a look at your first homework piece, which is the Thierry Carter question. Um, I'm a real big fan of incomplete records. I believe they're a true test of an accountant. You're going to have to do a Rubik's Cube. For those of you who don't know what a Rubik's Cube is, you need to do a Google search for them. Because when my day, they were the coolest piece of kit you've ever had. It was a bit like Tetris, but in a cube. All right, the Rubik's Cube. And actually, you had to put together the cube in lots of different ways. And you had to start somewhere and get your teeth stuck into the cube. It eventually became so frustrating that you would throw it against the wall and it would break into a million pieces. That's exactly what incomplete records should feel like to you. You're not going to get it all right. It would be a very, very talented individual who was able to smash this question from the start to the finish. Because you're going to have to put together your puzzle in a different way. It is going to be a profit and loss and balance sheet when you get incomplete records. But you're not going to be given all of the information. You're going to be given part of the information, and you're going to have to piece together the puzzle. So if you were brave enough, you probably should have had a crack at doing the Terry Carter question on your own. All right? And you can use this as either a tool to check your answer, or if you're not sure, then this is a useful place to start for incomplete records. Okay, now, for those of you who, are, um, who want to work along with this question, um, I'm first of all going to read it. And when I read it, I'm really, really interested to find why they've told me the things they have. To start a puzzle, you must understand the pieces of the puzzle. And then you can pull it all together at the end. So here we go. Terry Carter does not keep adequate records. Do you remember we did that topic on adequate records? Adequate, of course, means good enough. This guy is a muppet. He basically keeps all of his records in a box, in a corner, where his cat sleeps on it, it's got coffee spilled all over the place, and actually, you can barely read bits. So what we've got to do as accountants is put that information together. So he keeps inadequate records for his business, and his year ended is the 31st of December 2003. Okay, cool, so I'm happy about that. He has, however, been able to supply the following information. So he's given us some information, and we're going to fill in the rest. Uh-oh, immediately I'm panicking because I've got this first word here which says markup. So he's given me markup. For those of you who don't like markup and margin, this is a question where we're going to have to use it. But don't panic, all right? That information by itself is useless until we start putting the puzzle back together. He's then given me an amount he paid to his creditors of 234000 Now remember, why on earth would he give us the amount paid to creditors? Ah, right, so credit is, that must be people we've brought stock from, so that must be starting for my purchases. Okay, and I actually write that next to it. Don't write trade credit is, because it's not really credit is, it's actually your purchases. It's the amount you pay in stock. This guy, Terry, is also giving you some idea of his business expenses. Oh, it says excluding depreciation. Ah, right, so these expenses are just what he has paid. And I guess... They haven't told me what type of expenses, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm a bit worried. I'm like, okay, so they could be anything, like uh, rent and insurance and petrol for his car. Um, it could be anything for the business to run. So he's lumped them all into one total of £32,100. Then, oh, Terry, there he is there. He's taken some money for himself. This is the owner, Terry. He's taken out money. It's not stock, it's money, and you need to remember that. Okay, cool. So right now I'm like, wow, these guys have given me this information. I have no idea how to put this together yet. Don't even know what they're doing. And at this moment, if you want to cry in your bedroom, you're more than able. So let's have a look now. What's coming? Terry Carter has also been able to provide the following information. 31st of December 2002. We've got a list of items down here. Okay, so he's giving me these items, and I'm going to circle those. I don't know why. It's because I'm a bit of a special kid, and I'm, I'm just going to circle them. Circling... Circling, I say circling, I'm drawing a square. Um, so then we can have a look here and go, right, so last year, this year, end of the year, beginning of the year, end of the year, beginning of the year, woohoo, Bell CD, remember that? End of the year, oh my god, these must be my Bell BDs. So now I'm feeling slightly relieved. He's given me some Bell CDs and Bell BDs for these items over here. We've got our motor car, we've got cash in the bank, and then, that's a bit weird. Bell BD for cash in the bank, and then my Bell CD for cash. Oh, that's my cash at the end of the year. Oh, cool. So that's my bank account. I started with ten grand, and I finished up with twelve thousand five hundred. Got creditors. That's what uh, I owed them last year. That's what I owe them now. Stock. Bell BD for stock. Uh, okay, I've got no idea. That's. Oh, right. No, wait. That's my opening. Sweet. 
that's my opening stock, and Balsidi, that must be my closing stock. So I'm looking at it thinking, cool, I've got two items I needed for my profit and loss there, and prepaid. Prepaid. I've seen that somewhere before. What does prepaid mean again? Okay, there's a down, that's right, prepaid means down, and I've got 600 as a Bal BD and 250 as a Bal CD. Okay, cool, so they're gonna mess around with that business expenses up there somehow, but I'll deal with that later on because I can't figure out what's going on yet. It says, there were no purchases or disposals of fixed assets. So I didn't buy any fixed assets during the year, and I didn't sell any fixed assets during the year. Okay, that's cool. So let me just double check what's happening with my motor car. My motor car started the year at six grand. That was what it was worth, and at the end of the year it was worth 4,500. Okay, cool. So, do you remember what Ebby said? Yeah, that's why he got the chocolate bar for that lesson. He said, oh, that must be your depreciation, sir. And then we all took the mic, remember that? That's the 1,500 pounds right there. And yes, it's depreciation, Ebby. If you forget that in the exam, I'm gonna have to hurt you. All right, now, oh, wait, can I say that on a video? Because you can use it against me in the future, anyway. Right, so what I want you to do now is, the question says, you need to do the trading and profit and loss account for Terry Carter for the year ended 31st of December 2003. So you now have to get stuck into your trading and profit and loss account. The key for putting the puzzle back together is, you know how you start with all of the, the corner bits for your puzzle? Well, in a way, we're going to start like that for our trading and profit and loss account. Okay, I'd like you to do one thing for me now. I'd like you to set up your trading and profit and loss account if you haven't already. Do your two columns and then write the word sales in. Okay, right, so we've got our workings box here for the Terry Carter question. Um, if you haven't done a workings box, you're going to need one. All right, when you do incomplete records, there are so many marks for just taking your best guess at figures you should and should not use. All right, now for me, if you haven't done a workings box, do one now, and you're going to need it for when we do it. All right, so I've drawn up my, um, my uh, profit and loss account here. I've headed it up Terry Carter incomplete records, so when I put it in my folder, I know that when I hand it back to Mr. Walsh for having done it, he can give me some comments on what I need to do to improve. But if you're following this record, there is no reason why you should get it wrong. Okay, right, so, um, let's go back to, uh, actually, I'll leave this here. I want to talk about putting together a puzzle again. You've got to start somewhere. You've been asked to do a trading and profit and loss account, and you need sales. So I'm going to write sales here. I know that I need a figure. In the question, is there any way you can work out your sales figure? Have they given me debtors? No. Have they given me sales? No. At the moment, there is nothing that I can do to figure out my sales. So, putting together a piece of the puzzle, I can't put it together all yet. But what I do know is that I've got other pieces of the puzzle, so I'm going to start filling it in, right? So I've got no sales figure, so I'm going to leave that blank in the last column just for a moment. I know I'm going to need one at the end. So then I'm going to do my cost of sales section. Opening stock, plus purchases, less closing stock, will give me my cost of sales, and then I can work out my gross profit. 
Okay, now remember what I said about putting together a piece of the puzzle. Fill in the gaps. Move your Rubik's Cube in slow bits until you can start filling in the holes. Now in the question, did they give me opening stock? Well, let's go back and have a look. Can I get a mark? Opening stock. Let's have a look. Openings. There's stock there. There's my Valvede. There's my opening stock. Thank goodness. I'm going to put in 10 grand. Let's get ourselves a mark. All right. I'm starting to feel the pressure in the exam. There's 10 grand. Okay, cool. Now my purchases. All right, so I'm going to go back to the question. Any way I can work out purchases? Well, they've given me some information there about the amount paid to my creditors, and we did say that was purchases, so I'm going to start with that. Okay, so I'm going to start with that. Now, on my workings box, I'm going to put my calculation for purchases. So for my purchases, I'm going to start with 234000 Okay, the examiner will look at you, and they'll be like, okay, cool, he's got some workings there. Was there anything else that would have messed around with my purchases? Well, you're damn straight there is. There are these creditors down here. People that I owe money to for buying stock, for purchases. Okay, so I know that my creditors at the end of the year were three grand. Now, what effect does that have on my purchases figure? Well, that's going to make my purchases figure increase. Because if I paid my purchases, that's what would be added to my purchases figure of 2000 234,000, so I'm going to add that, three grand. And then what am I going to do with my opening creditors? I'm going to minus them off because they related to last year. So on my workings, I'm going to add 2,000, sorry, I'm going to minus 2,000 pounds. So basically I'm just adding 1,000, so my total purchases are 235,000 pounds. And I'm going to put a circle around that, then I'm going to put it into my puzzle. I've just found a crucial piece of my puzzle for purchases, £235,000. Okay, now, because I'm um, wanting to make sure I get all the sexy marks, I'm going to add those two figures together and I'm going to get 245000 Now remember, we still don't have our sales figure, but in the exam I'm just trying to fill my puzzle up. I'll find the missing pieces as I go through. Right, and the question, what was my closing stock? Well, if you go back to it, your closing stock, it's your Bell CD. There it is there. The end of the year, Bell CD for closing stock was £15,000. Okay, and we know we take away our closing stock. So actually, my puzzle's starting to come together a little bit better now. Okay, so uh, 245, 235, 230 is my cost of sales. Okay, there it is there. Let me zoom out. Okay, £230,000 is my cost of sales. And in the exam, you probably just earned yourself three marks. Okay, easy. So I'm starting to fill the holes and I still don't have my sales figure though. It's still bugging me. Now, I'm thinking, right, well guess what? Without my sales figures, I can't actually work out my gross profit either. So I'm thinking, okay, now I'm in a particularly stuck position. So was there anything they gave me in the exam question that would help me work out my sales once I had my cost of sales, and you're damn straight, there it is there, my markup. Now remember, markup is what you add on to the cost of an item you brought. Now in the lesson, do you remember when we did our can of Coke? Here it is here, all right? It cost me 50p when I brought it, that was the cost price. And then if I sold it for one pound, all right, that's my selling price, the difference was what we called mark up. Okay? It's what we called mark up. It's what I added on. Now, in this question, how much did I add on to my cost? Well, I added on 50 pence. But what is that as a percentage of your original cost? Ah, it's 100%. My mark up is 100%. It's what I've added on to the original cost price. Now, if you're still stuck with margin, you should look at it and go back to the question and go, right. Markup, Mr. Walsh said, it's what is added on. Markup is what is added on to the cost. It's what is added on to the cost. So there is my cost of all my items, and I'm adding it on. So what was the markup again? It was 25%. Right. So whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to add on 25%. So that makes my cost of sales 100%. I'm going to add on 25%. That makes my selling price 125% of the cost price. Okay, let me do that again. 
Let me zoom in. There's the cost of my can of Coke, say. Its original cost represents 100% of the original cost. And I want to add on 25%, so on your calculator, it is really, really simple, okay? You're not going to see that, probably. Oh, well, maybe. Okay, so my cost of sales, 230000 and actually I want to divide it up into 1% lots. So I divide it by 100, get an answer, then times it by 125%. I'm adding on another 25%, and there is my total sales. We've just found a crucial piece of our puzzle by using a problem-solving skill. So 287500 287500 and now I'm laughing because I'm thinking to myself, look at me, my, I'm a smug bastard, and actually what I can do now is work out that my gross profit is going to be £57,500. I've put together a piece of this puzzle and I feel pretty smug with myself because I've used markup in the correct way. Okay, right, so but we haven't finished the puzzle yet. It still doesn't look very good. There's still gaps everywhere. We know that we'd normally add other income, but I don't remember in the question, was there any other income? Any other income? Uh, any other income down here? No, it doesn't tell me that I've got any discounts received. So I didn't sell any vehicles, so there's no like profit on sale or anything crazy. So, boom, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to miss out my other income in my puzzle because I don't need it, and then all I'm going to do is less my expenses. Okay, now, with my expenses, I had that funny thing in the question, didn't I, with my expenses? It didn't, didn't tell me rent or wages, it just said business expenses excluding depreciation amounted to £32,100. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take that figure and I'm going to start using it for my, uh, my workings, okay? So I'm going to find my workings, and in my workings box, because Mr. Walsh will want to see that I've done this, there's my expenses, and I'm going to start with £32,100, okay? Now, anything else in the question that gave me a little bit of support with expenses? Is anything else in the question... There's my amount paid for my expenses. Drawings, no, it's got nothing to do with it. Cash, no. Creditors, no. Stock, no. Prepaid business. Ooh. Prepaid business expenses. Ah, sweet. Right, remember, prepaid always means down. So what am I going to do with this figure at the end of the year, this bell CD? Prepaid means down. So I'm going to minus that one, which means that I must have to add this one. Okay? So on my workings box, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to add 600, and I'm going to minus off 250. Okay, now because in the exam I want to get it right, 32,100, I'm going to add 600 on, minus off 250, meaning that for my missing piece of the puzzle, I've got 32,450 pounds for this incomplete record question for my expenses. So over here, under my expenses, I'm going to write business expenses, because they haven't told me any funny name to use, so I'll just call it business expenses. 32,450. Okay, and is there any other expenses? In the question, there was one. Do you remember the one that Ebby told me that I should never forget? Let's go back to it. Can you remember what it was? It always relates to this here that it said in the question. Look at that. Business expenses excluding depreciation. That was my prompt to find out the decrease in the value of my car. Now, I didn't buy any cars during the year, and I certainly didn't sell any. So, if that's what the car was worth at the start of the year, and that there is what the car is worth at the end of the year, what is the change? Hey, presto, I've just found out that my depreciation for the year is 1500 
in our depreciation, we've just worked it out, our depreciation okay, was £1,500. Now, I've been a bit naughty here in the exam question, because what I didn't do, I should have put these in the last column, but it's okay for now. I'm going to work out my net profit, and my net profit is 57,500, which was my gross profit, minus uh, 32,450, minus 1,500. Okay, and I'm going to get 23,550 pounds as my net profit. Okay, so we've slowly started to put this piece of the puzzle together. All right. Okay, so now if you're brave enough, you should be able to do the balance sheet now. All right, I want you to go to your balance sheet. I want you to get it ruled up, and I'd like you to figure what goes in it and see if you can have a crack at doing it now. Right, so what we, should do, uh, what we should be doing with the balance sheet is um, making sure you understand one fundamental rule, and it's this one here. That the balance sheet they've asked you to do is for the year ended 31st of December 2003. And actually, part two of the question is very specific. You cannot use your Bell BD. So if I go back here, really when I'm doing my balance sheet, all I need to use is my Bell CDs. These Bell CDs here are absolutely crucial for my balance sheet. So. People often ask me, you know, well, okay, so I'm going to start off with my fixed assets, sir. So here we go. I'm going to put my fixed assets in as a heading. All right. I want to make sure that I do it properly. Fixed assets. But what value do I use in the question for my motor car? Well, the motor car itself is got a value at the end of the year, at the 31st of December. So I can't use the £6,000 they gave me in the question because it had gone down by 1500 So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bash 4,500 into the last column, and I'm going to call it motor car. Okay, just like they have. Right, now do they have any other assets in the question? Uh, no, they don't. That's it. In our list of um, Bell CDs, all we had was one fixed asset and no additions and no disposals. Okay, so it's fine. Alright, so what comes next in our um, schedule here, or in our balance sheet? We're going to have our current assets. <coughs> Okay, and I want to underline all my headings because it's vital for me. My current assets so far, what have we got? Well, if we go down our list of current assets over here, we've got no motor car, I've used him. Uh, cash in the bank, you bet, that's a good current asset. So let's put that in 12,500. 12,500, and I'm just going to call it bank. You can call it cash at bank or cash even, but let's call it bank because it's easier. So I've used him. Okay, I've used my cash in the bank. Creditors, no, that's a current liability. Stock, yes, there it is, closing stock. Current asset, definitely. So I'm going to put him into my um, current asset section as well. Closing stock for £15,000. Right, so I'm going to rub him off my list of uh, checks there. Done. And, oh, prepaid business expenses. Prepaid expenses for two fifty. dollars Current asset, we know that. £250 prepaid expenses, just like that. Okay, now were there any other current assets in this whole question? Any other current assets anywhere? No, no. Don't use your Bell BDs because they're from last year. Nope, that's it. Okay, so I've done all of my um, current assets now. 
So I want to add them up, and I've got 27,750 pounds. Okay, all right. Uh, in the exam, I would always encourage you to uh, add it up on a calculator. Never trust your brain because we're all idiots. Okay, so there we go, current assets. Let's have a look at our current liabilities now. These are people that we owe money to. I want to go back to the question, and really, there was only one current liability, wasn't there? And that was that funny creditors. Where is it? Uh, no, I don't want to use that one because that's my Balbidi, but I desperately want to use the one at the end of the year, my £3,000. So my credit is for three thousand pounds. Zoom out again. Credit is for three thousand pounds, just like that. I had no other creditors at all, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to underline it there, and I'm going to take my um, current assets of twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and fifty, and I'm going to minus off three thousand, and I'm going to get twenty-four thousand. 750. Now we know that that is called working capital. Okay, it's our current assets minus our current liabilities. It's the amount the owners have in working capital. Okay, cool. Now, I've only got one more thing I need to do now. Let's put together this puzzle. I'm going to add my fixed assets to my working capital to get a figure of plus 4,500, and I'm going to get 29,000. 250 pounds, just like that. Okay, now, we would normally take away any long-term liabilities now, but in the question, this guy Terry Carter, he didn't have any long-term loans. There were no loans in the question. So, I don't need to worry about it. What I'm gonna do is make that last figure there, that's my most important figure. I'm gonna use capital letters, and it's my net assets. We believe that that is what Terry Carter is most likely worth. Now, here comes the funny part about incomplete records. The question didn't give me any opening capital at all, but I'm still going to put it in. Opening capital, plus net profit, minus drawings, and that will give me closing capital. Now remember, we're putting together a piece of the puzzle, right? Now whenever you do incomplete records, there is one trick you must always remember. Your net assets here must always be the same as your closing capital. All right, It is a trigger. You must remember that. That's how we're, we're going to force it to balance with incomplete records. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 29,250 right there. Because if I've done everything right, these two figures must be exactly the same. All right. So let's work backwards. In the question, what were my drawings? Well, it said in the very top part that the owner's drawings were 18,900. So I'm going to put that in there. Now I'll put brackets around it because we normally minus drawings. And net profit in the question, well, when we did it in the profit and loss, it was 23,550. All right, that would have been a plus because it was a profit. So how the hell do I get my opening capital? Well, here comes the trick with incomplete records. Work backwards to find out your opening capital. And of course, when you work backwards, you just change the signs. It was a minus coming down the list drawings. Now we go back up the list and we change it to a plus. Profit would become a minus to get my opening capital. Okay, so 29,250. I'm going to add on the 18,900 minus the 23,550 to give me an opening capital of 24,600 pounds. We've now found all of the missing pieces in the puzzle for incomplete records. Okay, right. Putting together the puzzle is not easy, all right? And I want you to work through the rest of the Bible questions for incomplete records, and if you need any help, come and see me.